Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for dropping in to Healing Body, Mind, and Soul. I am so excited today to have the honor and privilege of, e of interviewing this fine lady, Joan Stutes. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how I met Joan. We met at, um, at a seminar, at a workshop that we were both going to, and we kind of hit it off. We ended up having lunch together and chit-chatting, and I just loved Joan. And what I loved about her is that she was just so shooting straight from the hip. Joan tells it exactly like it is, and I really admire a woman that is outspoken like that. She also invited me to a great group of women that she gets together with once a month called Joan's Lunch Bunch. And I just love them. I've met some very fine ladies there. I'll let Joan herself tell you her story. And I know that you will love her as much as I did. So without further ado, please welcome my guest, Joan. Joan, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great, and I feel very privileged to be a part of your podcast library here. But let me begin by telling you a little bit about my Lunch Bunch group. I decided 10 years ago that the problems of the world could be solved if people would sit around the kitchen table and become friendly and talk about their worries, their hopes, and their dreams. So I started with four people around my own kitchen table, and it has grown over the years to meeting at restaurants and having 15 to 20 ladies. And we have different topics each month. Sometimes it's hard, what I call hard business subjects, accounting, sales, you know, the hard stuff. And then some, sometimes it goes into what I call the woo-woo area. We have uh, healers, we have acupuncturists, we have card readers, uh, um, astrology, all kinds of different topics and how they relate to business. So it's a wide variety of topics and we always have a good time. Have we solved all the problems of the world? Well, not yet, not yet, but we've only been going 10 years. So maybe there's hope for the future. But that's so inspiring, Joan. I remember a speech that I was giving not that long ago. And I remember it was really just channeled for me. This information was just coming to me and I was in front of a group of really powerful women. And I was basically giving the women a call to action and leadership. And it's just what you've done. Lead in their own communities and in their little small places. Lead in your household. Lead in your communities. And get together and start talking about things. And I, I'm with you, Joan. I think the world problems can be solved around kitchen tables, restaurant tables, just anywhere where people are willing to put down their differences and be together for a little while. I think you're on to something, Joan. I think it's amazing. And I'm glad you're doing it. One of our most interesting topics was talking about how the LGBTQ community is welcomed or not welcomed into the community. I have a friend who schedules events for the members of the LGBTQ community. And what she does is go out ahead of time and say, this is a gay wedding. This is a, a gay community uh, event. This is a gay engagement party. And what, are you and your staff going to be friendly to them? I was shocked at the amount of resistance she got here in California. Where are we you think, kidding? Really? I'm not kidding. In Cal, I, that's what I said. In California, she said, "Oh, Joan, you wouldn't believe it." But that was, and then a lot of the ladies that come regularly to my lunch bunch group raised their hand and said, "I'm gay. I'm gay." Well, we all sort of knew it, but it was interesting to see them come out to the group. It was just a lot of fun and one of the tender meetings that we had and enjoyed. 
I didn't realize even in California, that's an interesting thing that your friend found out by, by putting on events and asking people what's going on with them. I even love that she asked, are you going to have a problem with that, right? <laughs> it's that, you know, we her, her son is gay, so she was aware of the issue and knew, knew that there was resistance. Amazing. I wouldn't even think I wouldn't even think of that in 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 the San Francisco Bay Area that we live in. You know, yeah. I wouldn't even think about that. Now, Joan, I've been to a couple of your lunch bunches and I inv well, I invited you sight unseen before uh, we even um, I had even attended one of your lunch bunches to be on my podcast because I just I just like the kind of woman you are, Joan. It, but once I went to your lunch bunch, what I loved was this triangle of mastery um, talk that you did. Um, could, you, um, could you give us a little taste of that here on the podcast? Oh, wow. I love talking about this because it has been such a method of success and going forward for so many people, including myself. So here's the idea. You think of a triangle with the point of the triangle pointing to the sky. And think of ideas floating across the sky, and some of them are dropping into that point of the triangle. And you look at it and you say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I think I'll do something about that. So then you investigate it and then you research it, and then you become active in it, and then you commit to it, and then you start practicing it, and eventually you become masterful at that idea. Now, the way I've discovered, the best way I've discovered to illustrate this is to think about when you were 15 and a half years old and your friend got a driver's license. And the idea dropped out of the sky into your head or through your friend's conversation. Uh, maybe I'll get a driver's license. I bet I can do that. So here's the idea dropping out of the sky into your head. And now you're going to research it. You're going to get permission from mom and dad. You're going to do driving practice with friends and family hopefully well enough so they remain, remain friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then you take the test, you study for the test, you take the test. And during this period, people say, do you drive? You say, not yet, not yet, but I'm working on it. See, before you had the idea, people would ask you, do you drive? You say, no, I don't drive. So then now you've graduated. Not yet, but I'm working on it. I'm thinking about it. I'm studying for it. Then you get your driver's license. Yay! So now what are you doing? You're driving You're by yourself to school. One of my favorite things when I first got my driver's license was to drive out to this uh, family farm and get milk. And they had a son who was very good looking who I eventually <laughs> married. Oh, <laughs> so okay. So <laughs> my driving adventures had dual purpose, you know, get the milk, get the guy, okay? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so you're driving and now you're maybe driving to Santa Cruz and people are asking you, do you drive? And you say, I got my license and I went to Santa Cruz with my friends. I even drove to San Francisco and drove up and down the hills. You know, I'm doing okay with it. All right, so how many hours does it take to get to mastery? For global mastery, according to Malcolm Gladding, is 10,000 hours. So yeah. at some point in time when you practice enough and experienced enough, you become a master. And now you're driving to Santa Cruz no thought about it. You're driving, drinking coffee, talking on the phone. You're going to Yosemite. You're going, maybe you're going up to drive up to Seattle for a vacation. Now, when people ask you, do you drive? Well, of course I do. 
And this is what I call, of course, consciousness. So when you reach this consciousness in your business, are you in the investment advisor business? For example, for me, well, of course I am. I've been in it eight years. Do you have Lunch Bunch? Is it a good group? Well, of course it is. It's a wonderful group. I have so much fun each month putting that together, and I have the best group ever of ladies who attend. So what, the reason I love this triangle idea is it gives a good way to measure where you are in a project. Are you at the beginning where it just, it's an idea that dropped out of the sky and say, wow, I'm thinking about it. Are you a little further along the path? You say, you know, I'm practicing. I've been in it a couple of years. It's going well. Or are you confident about saying, well, of course, of course I am. I've finally learned to say, you know, my, Title is investment advisor representative, but my job in working with people is money coach, helping people move into the fourth quarter of their life. Now I can say that because I'm definitely in my fourth quarter, just having had my 84th birthday in March. Yay! Go. <laughs> So I can talk with great validity and authority about being in the fourth quarter of life and how people are scared about running out of money, how, how people are um, afraid to make a will or a trust because that means they're going to die, you know. But right. There's so many things that go on about getting old. We really don't want to think about getting old. We really don't want to think about dying. We really don't want to take, think about distributing our assets. <laughs> and so everything you don't want to think about, <clears throat> that's what I do. That's what I do, Paul Joan. <laughs> that's so funny, Joan. You know, I love listening to your story. I love your, um, your mastery triangle. And um, my first thing that I remembered when, um, when you're listening, um, when I'm listening to you tell the story and you tell the story, when I was um, 16 years old and I got my driver's license here in the Bay Area, so um, Joan was talking about driving to Santa Cruz, which is over some very windy mountains from where we live in San Jose. And um, the day before my 16th birthday, my mom piled me in the car and said, you're taking your test tomorrow. Let's go to Santa Cruz. And she made me drive over Santa Cruz. And then um, only, only people in the Bay Area will really understand this. So I, so I survived driving over Highway 17 to Santa Cruz at, um, at the day before my 16th birthday. And then I think I'm all done. We have lunch and I think I'm all done. I think, whew, I made it. I'm sure I can take my test tomorrow. I'm fine. And then she goes, okay, here's the keys. We're going back Highway 9, which was wrong. Oh my God. <laughs> Only locals will really understand that joke. But that's the kind of mom I had. She, she would push me over the cliff and say, learn to fly <laughs> or learn to drive. But we both survived and I did get my um, driver's license. But it brought back all these memories when Joan was telling her, um, was telling her story about mas the, this mastery triangle. And I love this because it, it really gives you a place to check in to where you're masterful or where you need, you need work. And for me also, it really brought to my consciousness how many places I was in of course consciousness as you call it, um, and how many places um, I was in, of course, consciousness and growing impatient with people around me because they weren't there yet. So it was a weird way for me to be judging others. And, and this, of course, consciousness that you talked about really was, um, because it was so simple and so, and so easy, really was um, um, a mind changer for me. So I really want to thank you for that. I think you're up to some wonderful work, Joan. Is there somewhere that our users can get hold of you or our, um, excuse me, our listeners can get hold of you if they wanted to um, 
have a piece of you um, for themselves or to get some financial advice or to maybe come to your lunch bunch, Joan? Sure. My phone number, we'll start with that, 408-806-7230, 806-7230. My email, the best email is Joan Stutz, J-O-A-N-S-T-U-T-E-S at gmail.com. I have business emails, they're more complicated. And you can look on Facebook for Joan's Lunch Bunch and look back through to see the different programs that we've done. Uh, in July, we're having a hypnotherapist who just is absolutely wonderful in her method of bringing people into that relaxed consciousness. Wonderful. So, you know, I try to cover the whole um, spectrum of topics just to keep it interesting for people. And maybe that's why I've survived for 10 years. People say that networking groups typically do not last that long. Well, and Joan, you have people that have been coming the whole time. There were some women that, um, that stood up at your last meeting that I was at. They're like, I've been coming for eight years. I've been coming for nine years. So whatever you're doing, you're doing it right, Joan. You're an inspiration and you're a wonderful um, leader of women. Thank you so much for all that you do. One other thing, if you want to get on my invite uh, email list, then use that Gmail list. I do do Zoom workshops on social security and uh, women and the challenges of reti establishing a retirement fund because women have special challenges. They don't work as many years, they get paid less, and they tend to invest conservatively. So there's some real challenges there. But I do have those both Zoom and in person regularly. So if you want to be on my email list uh, for inviting, jonesstutes at gmail.com. Fantastic. This has been so much fun, Ariel. I didn't know this would be so much fun. Oh, I love it. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for dropping in. And don't forget, I also want to do a shout out that my book that I've just recently co-authored Experts and Influencers, the Leadership Edition, a number one bestseller on Amazon in three countries, is available also in the liner notes. So make sure to pick that up for yourself. And Joan, you are a leader among women. Thank you so much for being a pioneer and thank you so much for all that you do. So until next time, everybody, this is Ariel and I want to wish you happy healing.